welcome back. This is part two. We're doing these deeper dive videos. Um, and in the first video, which I'll link somewhere, we reviewed the Python Oracle DB driver, which um, is something that's been created here by a team within Oracle. Um, and we just reviewed how to um, connect to your database inside VS Code. But for this part two video, we want to connect via ORDS, which is Oracle REST Data Services, uh, specifically the APIs. Now we're gonna do this part two video without any uh, open authentication. Luckily, there's less that we have to focus on with uh, this part two. So let me scroll to the uh, VS Code, open this up, and I will show you what this looks like. You can see right off the bat that there's a lot less um, code. There's actually more commenting than there is uh, than there is actually code. We have um, these libraries that we're importing here. So the requests library is very, very popular. Um, and then this pretty print library. This is completely optional. I just did this to, um, when we get the response from our API, make it more like readable, but you certainly don't have to do this. If you're coming from the first video, then you recognize this portion here. This is the uh, test URLs file that I created. And we're strictly focused on this test2 URL. Okay, so let me just um, go to the test urls.py. So we have test2 underscore URLs is going to equal this ORDS endpoint. That's that's the table that we are going to auto rest enable. So we'll we'll go to our table here, which you can see I'm signed in as the dev user. This is database actions. So I'm, I've signed in through um, my Oracle Cloud tenancy. And this is the table right here, this bizconfine table. You know, just a real simple table. It hasn't been normalized or anything, so that's not really the point. But um, you can see how I'm, I'm hovering over this and it's saying that it's rest disabled. So this is very easy, um, but right clicking and you're scrolling down to rest and then you're enabling and we're almost there. So you can actually change the alias if you want to, like if, like if you don't want the, the, the URI to have the table name, which you see right here, you can change it to something else. I mean, if I remove the D, you can see how it removes that D right there. Um, but I want to show you a little cheat here. So I could enable this, I could just click enable, but um, I think this is really cool. I want to show code and I thought this was a really cool way to teach you uh, like PL SQL. So I can go over here and I can copy this. I just, I was just messing around with this earlier. I can actually run this script and it'll do effectively the same thing. And you can see my script output right here. Uh, down here it says PL SQL procedure successfully completed. So you can pause this video and you can go on LinkedIn and now you can update your skills to include PL SQL or at least just one procedure. Um, so you're welcome. And actually, this is pretty neat. So if you see how I have on uh, uh, line three, I can actually change this to false, right? And I can undo what I just did. So now you know, now you know, now you know two PL SQL procedures, um, but we want to rest enable this, okay? So we're going to do this again, all right? Run the script. All right, well, successful. And then if you if you look at this navigator window right here, you, you can just barely see it, but there's a there's a little plug here. So this bank transfers table has already been rest enabled. And we just rest enabled this bizcon table, but if we hit refresh, then you can see it, 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 it rest enabled it. So now it's rest enabled, we'll go down to rest and we need that URI, we need that URL, that endpoint. So um, there's like several ways that you can do this, but one of the easiest is just going to curl command here and you have all these different methods right here, these methods or operations. Because we're just getting the URI, I don't, it doesn't really matter if I choose command prompt, PowerShell, or bash, but you know, I'll just, just force of habit. I have this endpoint for doing a get, and I really just want this portion right here. I don't actually need the curl command, so I should be able to copy that and then go back to my test URLs pi file. So now I have this URL, so I'm gonna save this. Okay, so we're like, 90% of the way there now. And then go back to this test2.py. All right, so we're at line six here, and we've just imported this URL. Now we'll skip down to line nine, because like I said, you know, we're pretty much there. I could conceivably just go to open a new tab. I could, I could actually just put this in here, and it will, it will, it will give me this get request, which I think is kind of neat, right? You can see the raw data there and you can pretty print it. So we should, we're gonna see something like this when we actually run this code. But let me not get too far off track. Uh, it's gonna look a little different because for the 
for the URL, we're assigning, this is what we're assigning. We're taking that base URL, which I hover over it, you can see it right here. But then we're gonna add this query string here. This is the way that we do it with ORs. We have the question, uh, Q equals, and then this is JSON. So these are keys and values, right? So kind of like we did in, in part one, we're gonna limit this search to location. So that would be the key. And then the value of that is gonna be ZIF, which is South Africa. And then we have another parameter that we are interested in. We want to, there's a, there's a value column in this, in this table. We wanna um, focus on the value column. We wanna retrieve locations that have a value that is greater than, that's what the GT means, uh, greater than 100. And then for those values, what we're gonna do is we're going to order those values, order by the value column in ascending order, right? So we should see like 100 to whatever, okay? And then we're, we just go right back to like your normal requests. If you've ever done this before in Python, um, we're just gonna say, we'll call this the request from ADB, which is my autonomous database. And then we do a requests.get because we are doing a get, that's the method or operation that we're doing. And then we're doing URL, right? But remember URL back up here on line nine is the URL that we imported plus all this stuff. We could just do print, you know, response from ADB. We could just do, we could just do something like that. You know, you could do dot, res I think there's a, is there a status? Yeah, status code is another one. So while we're here, I mean, I'll just do these ones, but I won't include this in the, in the code. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll just go ahead and save it. And then like I did it in the blog, I'm just going to run this in the interactive window here. Um, so I'm just gonna select this uh, run selection line in interactive window. Probably gonna have to open it up in another editor window. This is what we wanted to see. And it looks like, so you see this line right here, that's, that is what it would look like unformatted. It's just like one long string. We don't really want that. So that's why I chose to do the pretty print. Um, and then the status code, which is right here. So status code 200, that's, that's good. And then the pretty print actually starts right here, I believe. But we can open this in a text editor and you can see what this looks like. Um, yeah, so if we say, if you look at location, I'll just look at the first one, location, ZAF, and then the value is 100, 100.0016. And then you can see how, um, got confused there for a second, these decimals, but yeah, that's, it's definitely ascending. Oh, I was, actually I was wrong. So this, all this, all this jumbled up mess right here is actually just the, um, what we see here on line 17. So actually this is a good example of like why you might want to pretty print it because like it's very hard to read this. But then if you, if you come down here, we pick back up with on line 19, this is the status code right here. And then this JSON right here, that's actually part of the requests library, but we're pretty printing it so we can actually add like the indentation in here. So this is actually very nice to, to be able to see this. And then with each one of these items, I actually have an href that I could refer out to, which is nice. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you have all these referential links here as well. So um, that's it for, for this part two. Like I said, it's very easy. You know, and I'll leave a link for the query parameters for, for the ORDS documentation, but there's like all sorts of filtering and ordering and, and um, uh, that you can do with these, these query parameters. It's very, very powerful. The only downside is this is, this is uh, unauthenticated. So this is kind of like in the blind, you know, like anybody that has access to this endpoint, this right here, uh, anybody can go in and do a get. Um, no bueno, but I mean, for like testing type stuff, this is just fine, but this is certainly not something for a production workload or a production application or anything like that. So I will try and get out this uh, third video as quick as I can. And that one will be going over um, the rest endpoints, but I'm gonna walk through how to create the entire thing from start to finish and then show you how to create an uh, OAuth 2.0 client for that authentication. Um, be sure to check out the first video, you know, hit the like and subscribe. If you wanna see anything else, you can reach out to me on social media. I'll leave all that stuff um, in the description as well. But thanks for checking it out and I'll see you next time.